I've got my hands buried deep in compost in this rainforest village in Bangladesh. Why am I here and why do I have leech bites all over my leg? You'll find out on this episode of Your Blue Continent. Bangladesh is one of the poorest and most densely populated countries on Earth. Its 160 million people, roughly one-half the population of the United States, lives in an area just slightly larger than the state of Iowa, a density more than 36 times that of the United States, making it the most densely populated major country on the planet. The country also commonly tops the list of most climate-affected countries, with two-thirds of Bengalis living less than five meters above sea level and 28% of its people living on the coast. Sea level rise is being felt acutely, and during monsoon season, flash floods are often deadly. Generational poverty affects the ability of locals to adapt to climate change and protect their natural resources, with the entire country's domestic product amounting to the economic production of the state of Missouri. To increase economic fortunes, while at the same time addressing the pressures of Bangladesh's massive population on fragile ecosystems, a massive U.S.-led effort called Climate Resilient Ecosystems and Livelihoods or CREL, was launched in 2012 and helped communities organize themselves and sustainably manage adaptations to their changing environments. Some of this work was done by Chittagong-based NGO Kodak, which was kind enough to let me observe some of the work they were doing. I knew I needed to see how this all came together in practice. Codec, my hosting agency, which has been active for more than 35 years and works in 13 national districts inside Bangladesh, teaches organizational skills, provides micro-lending, entrepreneurial, food and agriculture security training, climate protection and adaptation, as well as conflict resolution training. The CREL program I came to observe was funded through USAID's International Technology Assistance Program and administered by Winrock International of Little Rock, Arkansas, through the government of Bangladesh and several national NGOs. To explain the organizational strategy for this project, I met with Kodak Director Munir Halal and Special Projects Manager Shital Kumar. Munir has worked with the organization for about 30 years after beginning as a trainer and rising through the company ranks. Shital, who was born on the South Bangladeshi island of Katubdia, has been with Kodak since 2013, but working in the industry for more than 20 years. He has a master's degree in zoology and helped open the first commercial crocodile farm in East Asia, among other successes. Shital spoke to me as we traveled to their nearby program area, known as the Hazari Kil Wildlife Sanctuary, where I would be permitted to observe the results of one of the more than 800 Krell implementation village zones throughout the country. As we spoke, Rain poured down and washed across the road for much of our journey in our tiny three-wheeled vehicle known as a tuk-tuk. This is a flash flood. Climate change is affecting our coastal areas. Sea level is rising. River cannot carry out huge amount of water. So coast very much affected by effects of climate change. He said the flash floods were different than the sea level rise, but they were sudden and dangerous, with especially large, deadly floods striking nearly every five years. Shetal explained how, through the Krell program, Kodak intervened to balance the natural resources of Bangladesh, while at the same time creating co-management partnerships and sustainable livelihoods for people living near the forest. These livelihoods include biocomposting, cow rearing, aquaculture, and ecotourism, with the overall goal to reduce the stress on sensitive forest resources. Resources. We are providing several types of alternative income generating activities. We are telling them please don't collect the fruits from the forest. This is food for wild animals. So you can produce similar type of product in new surroundings. You can cultivate there. We are providing free of cost seeds. We are giving pressure. Please don't do this. They say the activities they seek to change include taking firewood, either for themselves or for selling in the marketplace. Or hunting. 
The CREL program also provided Kodak with initiatives to promote good governance, capacity building, resource management training, gender empowerment, along with supporting livelihoods for forest-dependent people, including interventions such as providing cook stoves. There are 1,000 forest-dependent families, once fully forest-dependent families, and now it's shifted at least 500 families to other alternative activities. The forests of the area are rich in biodiversity. Even for a small country, with one of the most unique ecosystems on the planet, with 35 threatened and near-threatened species nationwide, Bangladesh's biomes include the world-famous Sundarbans National Park, where Gangetic river dolphins and approximately 200 royal Bengal tigers roam, and sometimes trouble the nearby humans. At Hazarikil, there exists the rare giant Saro, as well as three types of squirrels and several types of snakes, which do everything they can to prey on the sanctuary's observed 126 species of birds, including a rare parakeet. Interesting species of trees and plants abound too. This is a very rare tree in the world. This is bamboo leaf tree. Other trees, such as the guilan and the punangas, which features a natural medicine to counter the effects of malaria, are also present. Trees such as these can play a role in the developing carbon market for Bangladesh, which is in the preliminary stages. It will be divided into two parts. 50% to the local people, 50% will get to the government. These biological resources are not only important, but they create a pleasant environment for tourists to visit. One of the new jobs being created by Krell is that of a tourist guide. This is an opportunity for both indigenous forest dwellers as well as people from nearby villages. Bangladesh is a very densely populated country, but there are huge natural beauty. New ecotourism infrastructure allows guests to stay overnight in the forest, utilizing tree houses or tents, climb obstacle courses, ride zip lines, and hike several kilometers of trails featuring waterfalls. She has a plan to make fish culture in this lowland. Pedal boat, canoe, will introduce in here. Still, tourism is new to Bangladesh, and Bengali people must be trained to respond to anticipated needs of their guests. As we walked across the newly constructed pavilion, the untextured concrete beneath my feet became slicker than ice with the microalgaes that grow everywhere in East Asia. Whoa! Sorry. You all right? You can't let no, the so surface like that make people fall. One percent people of Bangladeshi people traveling in outside. Three decades ago, we only visited our relative's house. Today, Bengalis still see very few foreigners, and as I traveled through rural parts of the country, my presence attracted some aggressive staring from locals. Part of the Krell training includes educating locals about the needs of travelers. I spoke with a group of forest dwellers who had received work as tour guides, funded by the park entry fees. They said they had previously only been able to find work at the nearby tea plantation and that life opportunities had much improved. They said they have enough. They are happy. Maybe they could have advised me on how to avoid getting bit by leeches as I worked my way along their wet trails. <laughs> Uh, can you guys help? <laughs> Get rid of this guy. Mm. Come on. Help me out. <laughs> the forest people said their women folk had also benefited from the special school which had opened as part of the project. Ask Marna. A 36-year-old tourist shop employee echoed the same sentiment. He said he'd formerly been a farmer with a small-time timber business on the side and strongly preferred the steady employment offered by his store. Yeah. What do you like about this work? He's learning many things from the Actually, he's gathered experiences from hmm. tourist management. He said that the work was allowing him to support his wife and send their young child to school. A family in the neighboring village was also seeing a boost to their prospects from the manufacturing and selling of a fine compost made from cow dung and red worms. This man and his wife, Jori Navigum, create the fertilizer in a 15-day process they learned in a Kodak training session. Before only they use it after drying for fuel. And now they can use it as fertilizer. Who is buying the fertilizer? Tea farmers. Oh, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, some local people are using this fertilizer in their land. In the street of chemical fertilizer. Uh, can you uh, describe the benefits of selling this compost? Have improved your life? They are not buying the fertilizer, so they, right. they benefit from one. Right. Uh, they are selling the compost itself. Like they I have a gun. And they are in college.
So what did we learn in today's episode? We learned that local resource co-management activities can reduce stress on a fragile ecosystem by finding lifestyle alternatives outside the forest, in countries with millions of people attempting to adapt to a changing climate. And we learned that part of a nation's priceless resources can be their medicinal biodiversity with the potential to cure diseases such as malaria, and that protecting forests can also mean guarding this untapped, unexplored, or even priceless bioresource. And finally, we learn that a part of developing ecotourism involves a realization of the needs of a foreign tourist and that sometimes that entire mind frame needs to be instructed by program administrators in countries where interactions with foreigners have been extremely limited. The Krell program we covered in this episode protected 945,000 hectares and directly benefited more than 360,000 Bengali people, more than half of them female. I'd like to remind everyone about our initiative called the Blue Continent Fine Arts Alliance. Located on the websites for Artspan, Fine Art America, and Saatchi Art, you can find fine art images from incredible artists around the world that I've had the pleasure of meeting throughout my travels to develop this series, and also some of my own work. We'd like to thank Kodak for their work and for allowing us to cover it on our series. If you're interested in the work that they're doing, please visit their website here, or if you'd like to contribute your own skills or knowledge, send an email to this address. We'd like to thank the sponsors of this series, including all who contributed to our GoFundMe campaign, the incredible Bengali music from Ali Akbar Khan, Badal Roy, Ferdowsi Rahman, Shapla Shalik, and Vili Yat Khan, and Plumber Funeral Home in Augusta, Maine. Please subscribe and share widely. Click the link in the corner to subscribe to our channel. In our next adventure, we'll be in northern Bangladesh with a development agency called Ubinig. Until then, I'm Brennan. Peace.